Hello guys, welcome to a new video. In this opportunity, I want to talk about a particle that is moving under an attractive force. So the, the problem says, consider a particle of mass m moving in a plane under the attractive force and mu dividing r squared. Obviously, r is the distance between the particle and the origin of coordinates. Um, this force is directed to the origin of polar coordinates, r and theta. Here we want to determine the equations of motions of the particle. Okay guys, this is a problem. This is a problem of two degrees of freedom of a dynamical system because we have two variables, r and theta as the parameters that define the state of the system. So in this case the coordinates of the particle are x and y and the Cartesian and polar coordinates are related by these equations x is equal to r cosine of theta and y is equal to r sine of theta okay so as we say this is a two degree of freedom problem okay um the relationships between the cartesian and polar coordinates are r cosine of theta and r sine of theta respectively. So, because the particle is moving in this system, obviously the particle has a velocity v squared that is the sum of the velocities on each component. Okay? And the relationship of the the square of the velocity is the square, the addition of the square of the components. Um, to determine the velocity, we want to calculate, this is the velocity of the particle. And to determine the, this velocity, we want to calculate the velocity on each component okay so x dot is the component of the velocity along the x direction and this is the derivative of the x position with respect to time okay and it's the derivative of this equation with respect to time of this equation that i am highlighting with green with respect to time and as we know we take the derivative of the first term that means r dot multiplying the second term cosine of theta plus this, the first term multiplying the derivative of the second term and the derivative with respect to the sign of cosine of theta is minus theta dot the, the derivative of the argument multiplying the, deri the derivative of the function sine of theta because the derivative of cosine is minus is minus sines so x dot is equal to r dot cosine of theta minus because we multiply both sines right this is minus um, this is r theta dot sine of theta. Okay? And we do the same with y dot. And here we have the derivative with respect to the time of x dot. And we do the same with y dot. y dot is the derivative with respect to the time of the position y. Um, this is the derivative of this term that I highlighted with green, with orange, 
um, is the derivative of the first term r dot multiplying the second term using the product rule of the derivatives plus the first term multiplying the derivative of the second term and the derivative of sine of theta is the derivative of the argument theta dot multiplying the derivative of the function cosine of theta okay and we have this equation right here okay now we want to square those two equations okay we want to square x dot and y dot so let's square x dot when we square x dot we get x dot square is r dot cosine of theta minus r theta dot sine of theta square okay and we will use the perfect square formula this perfect square formula we are using it on this equation then we will get we will have this perfect square formula um, we will get them as a S square dot S dot square is equal to okay the first term is square R R dot square cosine square of theta plus the second term square will be R square theta dot square sine squared of theta right minus because we have the minus sign on this one two times the first term multiplying the second term r dot cosine of theta multiplying r r dot theta dot sine of theta minus sine right here okay this is the first term x dot we do the same with y dot square y dot square is equal to the first term okay we we have uh we have y dot right here y dot square is equal to r is dot sine of theta plus r theta dot cosine of theta square okay guys and this is using the same formula perfect square formula we get y dot square is equal to the first term square r dot square sine square of theta plus the second term square r square theta dot square cosine square of theta plus two times the first term multiplying the second term that would be r dot sine of theta multiplying the second term r theta dot cosine of theta okay we have those two uh, formulas right there um, then the velocity we know the velocity square is equal to x square dot multiplying y square dot and what we have to do is 
is we have to add these two equations together the green equations okay um, when we do that we will get the following equation what I did here is that I added this x dot the square and y dot the square and I got all these equation all these equation highlighted on yellow okay adding together x dot the square and y dot the square but this term is equal two times r cosine of theta r theta dot sine of theta is equal to this term and they cancel each other okay so finally i will get the following equation i got this equation and here what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take out common factor on this for example I will take out this common factor r dot square here and here and this r square theta dot square with this one I will take out those common factors and I will get the following equation p the square r dot square cosine square of theta plus sine square of theta plus r square theta dot square sine square of theta plus cosine square of theta okay guys what's that this is equal to one as you know and this is equal to one this trigonometric relationship and finally we get p square is equal to r dot squared plus l squared theta dot squared let's call this equation number one and this is the velocity of the particle moving uh, under the force that is directed to the center of the coordinates on polar coordinates right uh, you know that the kinetic and potential energies are defined by the, you know, the kinetic and potential energies are kinetic equal to T equal one half of the mass of the particle multiplying the velocity of the particle square right um, this would be equal to one half of the mass multiplying the velocity square but we know the velocity already from the equation number one so we replace the equation number one on here and we get r dot squared plus r theta dot square okay this is the kinetic potential the kinetic energy sorry um, the potential energy is on the problem already okay this is the attractive force and the problem is giving us a potential energy like this minus mu m dividing r okay guys then the Lagrangian of the problem we, we have the potential and the kinetic energy already then the Lagrangian is equal to t minus v and that is equal to one half of the mass and that is squared plus r 
square theta dot square uh, minus the potential minus mu m dividing r square. Okay, sorry, dividing r. Uh, we can re rearrange this equation like we can like and let's call this equation number two okay now we are taking r and theta as the generalized coordinates of this problem right we take r and theta as the generalized coordinates Q1 and Q2 right and since the potential energy V is independent of the velocity of the of any generalized velocity the Lagrange equations of this problem take the form derivative with respect to time of dl the q i dot minus dl q i equals zero. Right, we have i as one and two, etc. Okay. Um, now for R, the Lagrange equation is derivative with respect to time of dr dr dot minus dl dr equals zero okay okay we call this equation number three and this equation number four okay so now we have dl dr dot okay we come back to the Lagrangian and the LDR dot is derivative with respect the with respect R dot of the Lagrangian is two R dot square, right? And here this first term, okay, will be one half of the mass multiplying the derivative of R dot square that is two R dot, okay? And this is equal because this to cancel with this each, they cancel each other so this is m r dot then the derivative with respect to time of m r dot is equal to m r two dots okay and now the derivative with respect dl dr dr is equal to one half of the mass of the Lagrangian multiplying the derivative of r square theta dot square okay with respect r that would be two r theta dot square okay and these two they cancel each other and this is m r theta dot square okay minus okay i forgot to okay i forgot to take the derivative of this second term mu m dividing r okay so i i have to take the the derivative that would be the derivative of this term is minus mu m 
divided r square is because we have the original term like mu m dividing r and we write down that term like mu n we take the denominator to the numerator and we change the, the sign of the power like this right or minus one sorry right minus one so the derivative will be minus one multiplying the m mu r minus two and we can write that like minus mu r mu m dividing r square taking the uh, the r to the denominator and changing the power of the sign of the power so that's this term okay so that's a real quick explanation of that then we will have finally this term like m uh, r theta dot square minus mu m dividing r square okay guys okay then finally we get this equation like m finally the equation number four that is this one okay equation number four replacing these terms into equation number four okay i will have finally this m r dot r two dot minus m r theta dot square minus mu m dividing r square divide equal to zero and let's call this equation number five okay guys okay we call this equation number five now we do the same with the equation for theta okay so let's say we know that the Lagrange equation for theta is derivative with respect to time of dl d theta dot minus dl d theta equals zero. Okay, let's call like that equation number six. And now we have dl d theta dot is equal to one half of the mass. Right, we go we go to the Lagrangian. And we see the derivative with respect to theta dot of r theta dot square is equal to 2 r square theta dot. Okay? And this 2 cancel with this, and this is equal to m r square theta dot. Okay? Then the derivative with respect to time of the L d theta dot is equal to M R square theta two dots. Okay. Um, the L, the next term would be the L d theta is equal to, let's go to the, the Lagrangian to see the Lagrangian doesn't depend on theta, okay? It doesn't depend on theta, so the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect theta is equal to zero. Okay, guys? Then, if we replace these two terms into equation number six, right? We will get the following equation. M R square 
theta dot two dots equals zero. Okay, finally, we get the following two equations. We got these two equations, equation five, that we already calculated it on this page, right? And equation number seven, that is this one. Okay, but I am rewriting these two equations again. I'm highlighting them to make an emphasis on them. So, these two equations are the equations of motion of the particle moving under the potential energy that is given by the problem. These two equations are basically they are identical with those obtained for the Kepler's problem by the Newtonian mechanics. In this particle, the number seven particle equation the number seven equation uh, signifies the constancy of aerial velocity or equivalent angular momentum for the particle moving under the potential. This is the second, this is the Kepler's second law of planetary motion, okay? This is similar to the second um, law of Kepler motion, okay? Um, the uh, equation number five will be the solution. Uh, this equation, the solution of equation number five leads to the first law which asserts that the path of a plane of a planet describes an ellipse. Okay? So, these are the equation of motion of the particle as I said, equation number five uh, is related with the equation, uh, with the solution of a particle that moves under the central force, describing an ellipse, right? And this number seven equation is related with the second, the Kepler second law for planetary motion. Okay, guys, this is the problem for today. Hopefully you like it, you can give me a like, subscribe to my channel, and thank you for watching the video, see you on the next video, bye.